Welcome to the podcast. I'm just going to get straight into it and uh, rip this Band-Aid off. Yep. We launched a new segment. It's called Battle of the Bangers. Yeah. It was between this song selected by Jody Oddie. Mm. And I went down the old school path. In fact, they're both old school. DJ Sammy. Bit of heaven just to um, recapture some schoolies vibes from back in 2003. Put the vote out there. I, I like to crank this up for my children when it's their birthday, just in front of their friends and stuff when I'm dropping them off to school. It's like, yep. go shorty, it's your birthday. Yeah. And they're like, shut up, mom. Yeah, and you rip out the explicit version as well and you're like <laughs> dropping all sorts of outrageous <laughs> words like with your bulletproof vest on <laughs> and your gold cap teeth. And you're like, mom, <laughs> put the Hennessy down. Yeah. <laughs> And just behave. And by the way, those cornrows look stupid on you, Mum. <laughs> and then you're like, bang! Bop, 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 pop a few caps. <laughs> uh, That's what I do on, uh, on the school drop-off. Speaking of kids, mm. uh, my daughter Lottie is oh, two years sh- old. And she, she, she's got some hate, I'll tell you what. She's got so much hate in her heart for her dad. Oh my she's gosh. got so many daddy issues for a three-year-old. Already? Already. It's really concerning. What I if- Tried to get some advice from you, but it didn't help at all. What have you done to her? Well, who goddamn knows? But um, <laughs> look, let's hopefully it improves from here. We talked about that this morning. Oh. Also, we uh, caught up with our very good friend, and I'd say probably best friend, Ryan Fitzgerald. Fitzy. Yeah, we, oh, well, don't call him your best friend, mate. Fitz is not. <laughs> Fitz is not your best friend. No. As much as you want to manifest that and make it happen, he's not your best friend. Text him all the time. I oh, know. I speak to him all the time. You get much back? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's You're like, guy. hey, we both played at Sydney. No, he played at Sydney. You didn't. I'm allowed to say he's my best friend. It doesn't have to be mutual. Okay. I'm also best friends with LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the podcast, friends. Go off. Jones, I have a lovely little two-year-old daughter who's really starting to put together some real solid sentences. Little Lottie. Oh. She's so beautiful. Yeah, isn't She's she gorgeous. Lovely? She yeah. looks like a mama. She does, doesn't she? Mm. In fact, so much so that we're kind of kind of questioning whether Kara somehow had a baby with herself. Because <laughs> there's not even a skerrick of me nothing to look at with her. Lottie. No. Um, except for maybe her personality, because she can get a little bit sassy. Can she? Tell me if this is normal for a two-year-old. Okay. For her to just put out such hate directly towards me. <laughs> Got the camera out the other night and just uh, filmed Lottie in the process of mm. going through this little phase where she really, really... I'm not in her corner. Lottie. Do you love daddy? No. Hi, daddy. What? I hate you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, I could feel that. Oh. I could really feel that. And then she, A small she, part of my height dies every time she says it. And then she walked over and whacked you. Yes, yeah, she walked She's over. Really and she whacked me. <laughs> What's going on? You, you've you got about uh, 1,500 girls yeah. of all different ages. <laughs> is this normal female behaviour, uh, particularly for a two-year-old, or is there a special type of hate between my daughter and myself? I really experienced real hatred during the teenage years with oh, my great. daughters. Oh, my God, she hated me. So it gets worse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. So this is just the beginning. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't go bad, good, then bad? No, it just goes bad, bad, bad. Um, I, I'm really curious, though. There's something about little girls. Like, I don't know why they're so sassy and I don't know why they hate the world. Because my three-year-old, every time I ask her to do something, she's like, Daddy, do it. Like, So she swings yeah. the opposite way. She loves her dad, like worships him right. and hates mummy. Okay. So I'll be like, let's get in the car, darling. Daddy, do it. <laughs> darling, would you like to get dressed for childcare? Daddy, do it. Like, she's completely the opposite. She loves her dad. Yeah, see, yeah, sometimes it, it works. it even more sad that your yeah. daughter hates you. I know. <laughs> so it is purely just me. Yeah. I was so confident that you were going to say, don't worry, it's just a phase. Every little girl goes through it. No. Nah. But it's genuinely a me thing. No, nah, she'll hate you forever. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> that final part of my heart just died. Oh. Awesome. You can feel this too. Does good morning. It- does it actually genuinely make you sad, though, that she, when she says that? Yeah, it does. Yeah. You go, oh, my gosh. And Cara just laughs it off and says it's fine. She doesn't yeah. even know what she's saying. No. And, and, and I replied and say, well, she's never said that to you, has she? No, exactly. And also, you have to remember, though, this is the key takeaway. Three-year-olds are mental. Yeah. Like, they are bad crazy. Yep. Like, they have no concept of what they're doing, what they're saying, and, and the impact that it has. They don't know who they are. They yes. don't know what they're doing. Okay. Well, so don't Lottie's, worry about it too much. She's on her way to EOC right now as we speak. So, Lottie, if you're listening, I love you. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready to roll. Round one. Ladies and gentlemen, Battle of the Bangers. <laughs> yes. It's 
your battle of the bangers. Just a couple of our favourites in there, a bit of Nickelback, a bit of Billy Joel, you yeah, know. Yeah, why not? We didn't start the fire. A bit of Mortal Kombat at the front. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise that. Yeah, round one, fight. So okay, what's going to be? can you explain how this works? Yeah, so I'm going to have a song and you're going to have a song. Mm-hmm. And we need the people, the good people, the good fans and the listeners of Jody and Hazy's show, we need you to jump on Instagram and vote via a poll. Mm. So, one song each... And then whichever gets the most votes, we'll go through and we'll play this song at the end of the show. And okay. we'll really celebrate it. And you better believe we are absolutely going to rip it in the studio. Oh, my God. We mm. are so passionate about our respective songs. Mm. Can I announce mine first, please? You sure can. There's a bit of a backstory to this one. Yeah. So my children, whenever they have a birthday, I will play them this song. And what I, I, I'll play it when I'm perhaps in the school vicinity and all their friends are around and I'll wind down the windows and smash out a bit of this just to embarrass them. Once upon a time, once upon a time, <laughs> looking for it. Oh, Mum's playing Total Eclipse of the Heart again. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's this. That's good. And, and guess how it's received? Mum! Stop it! Stop the song or stop twerking? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That is a very, very good start. Thank so, you. Well done. Okay. Okay. Um, it's hard to beat. But can I take you back to a time? 2003, I just uh, finished school, and it's this real solid little purple patch. Yeah, right. We're like, I don't have a worry in the world. I've just finished my HSC exams. I'm free. Yep. Uh, and I'd convinced myself that I'd gone really well in year 12, and yep. I was going to absolutely ace these exams. Little did I know that about six weeks later, I got the worst results of all time, <laughs> like horrendously bad. To the point where I started to question the system <laughs> when I was telling my dad the results. And then we had a conversation, and I'm quite serious as to whether I was going to repeat 12, year 12. Right. Anyway, let's go back to school. What a few weeks result? before. No, I have to no, 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 we can't. What don't, was it? No. How dare you. No. Don't. <laughs> Sometimes you cross the line, Jody Oddie. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> it was like, really was it bad. a system out of 100? Or, yes. And what did you get? Oh, it doesn't matter. Jealous! Oh, just, all I need to tell you is it wasn't a score that would qualify you for any course to get into at uni. Just give me a it figure. It doesn't matter. Oh, it does to me. Oh, like in the 50s, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> huh? Yeah, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. It does at uni, uh, not um, in high school. It's just un- completely unrelated, but how much were your school fees each year? doesn't matter. <laughs> does not matter. It's about the experience, I think. <laughs> anyway, at school is on the Gold Coast. This oh. song was absolutely going off. Finding it hard to believe. You were in the 50s? That we're in heaven. <laughs> Can't wait till I get 85 in my HSC results. <laughs> and then and then afterwards, when I got the results, and all my mates were like, what'd you get? And I was like, oh, I haven't even opened the letter yet. I don't even care. <laughs> I don't reckon I will. I don't like As her anyway. As a tear ran down my face. <laughs> Oh, how unbelievably devastating. Anywho, um, let's just uh, squash that childhood trauma. Yep. Who are you going to vote for? Mm. In the club or DJ Sammy Heaven? Can we get your thoughts, Producer Zoe? I think I'm voting Heaven this morning. Yeah. Sorry, Jodes. I love Woo. In the Club, but there's just something about Heaven that's feeling good for a Friday. I love you. Yeah. I nurture you. I look after you. <laughs> I've taken you under my little this chicken is a wing. Betrayal. And this is how you repay me. Okay. Sorry. When I go to Heaven, I'm taking Zoe with me. <laughs> Producer Zoe, what do you got? This will be interesting. Oh, it's like choosing between oh. a child. No, I went to school as a year after Hazy, so Heaven was still a banger back for us. And yeah, okay. Oh, look. I love schoolies like Hazy. There's a front runner. He's really reading the room. And I didn't know which way uh, Sean was going to go because we're Neither did first... Sean when he was 16. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> when we fought, first brought this concept up, uh, and Sean said, oh, yeah, because then we can play songs by, like, Timmy Trumpet. I was like, no, you're just not on the same page with this thing. All right, you know what to do. Get voting and jump on the Instagram page at Nova919. Vote for In The Club or the better song, DJ I Sammy, Heaven. It, call it its proper name. It's In Duck Club. <laughs> from you Curtis, idiot. From Curtis Jackson. Oh, what a lame. Nothing beats a cosy winter getaway or escaping to a tropical paradise. If you're thinking about an early winter escape, whatif.com has just the place. Check out great accommodation deals across Australia on the Whatif app. What If, it's Aussie for travel. All in one. All in one. All in one. All in one. Oh. <laughs> yes, the golf is here. Words I never thought I'd hear myself say. I don't even know who I am, but I can't wait for the golf today. 
no, unbelievable stuff. A <laughs> giant, giant sporting uh, thing is happening at Grange Golf Club, and it's going to be epic. It's going to put... Adelaide in terms of golfing on the map. We've never seen players of this calibre right here in South Australia. It's unbelievable. And also, having been down the course uh, a couple of times this week, it looks incredible. Absolutely magnificent. Mm. Uh, in particular, the 12th hole, which is the watering hole. It's called the, it's called the watering hole. Yep, so this mm. is a big knockoff from the Phoenix Open, where basically it's going to be it's going to be a party atmosphere during golf, which yes. is something which is probably very foreign to all of the old experts back in the day. It's got probably some of the golfers saying things like this. Damn you people, go back to your shanties. <laughs> <laughs> After you sink it on the 12th. But that's good. Let's just have fun. Bring a bit of fun to golf. I know. Exactly right. I wonder how the players feel about, and I probably should have asked this question during the week, but how do they feel? Do they want a party atmosphere or do they want like the traditional shh? Why yeah. are you putting? No, I feel like, and clearly you can tell just by looking at him, that Cam Smith's not into that. No, he's yeah, not. He's a really professional introvert who who knows nothing about drinking beers. That's yeah. what he. That's what his mullet would suggest, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's exactly what it would suggest. He figured out that when he won the British Open that it holds about two and a half beers. Yeah. Yes. Exactly right. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to Vicky in Semaphore Park. Good morning to you, Vicky. Good morning, Jodie and Hazy. I'm so happy to be on the on the radio. We're so happy to have you. We're so happy to have you, Vicky. <laughs> and I'm hoping you need the code word. Yes. What have you got a code word for us this morning? Because yesterday I tried to just give it away without even getting the code word. What do you got? <laughs> Caddy. And I would love to be there, Caddy. I know my my ones to my nines and my club. Oh, <laughs> sounds like it. Who's your favourite player, Vicky? It would have to be. Um, well, it's Cam Smith this weekend for yes. Adelaide, of course. Yeah. And I hate to say it, but Tiger has really got it. But his morals, <laughs> but his game, yep. yeah, I'm full. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> he is absolutely back. Vicky, congratulations. A few question marks over Tiger's behaviour. Oh, thank yeah. you. Oh, very nice stuff. Mm. Um, so there you go. Uh, Brooks Kepka as well, raising a few eyebrows, yeah. particularly in amongst this team. Yep. Yes. Abby, do you want to uh, raise your voice here? What would you like to know? <laughs> what, what, what are your feelings on Brooks? Oh, just a few people didn't know who Brooks Kepka was. Just, now I very much know who he is. What do you like yeah. about him? Um, he's he's putting. hot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a block way to put it. I've never liked golf, ever, but I was doing a bit of research yesterday for an online article and saw him and went, oh, hello. Hi. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Hello, Brooks. Good luck to Brooks. No doubt he's listening this morning. Good uh, luck if turn- he wins. He should come and chat to us on Monday. He could come into the studio if he really wanted to. Absolutely yeah, no we'll, problems at all. We'll put that to him. I mean, right before he flies out in his private jet. But we'll, we'll Probably ask with his wife and family. But anyway, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's irrelevant details, yeah. mate. Brooks isn't listening this morning because he was listening the other day, but you called him Brooks Kepler. <laughs> And like, that really spooked him. Like Kipler b- yeah. potato. Kipler potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Live Golf Adelaide, a high stakes uh, weekend of shotgun starts, fan village fun and headline artists, including Australian DJ sensation Fisher. Visit livegolf.com. Oh, geez, Joe, it's all heating up yes. in the jungle. I'm a celebrity, of course. Um, and... A recent exit was Nick Cummins, the Honey Badger, which was a bit of a surprise. Badger. Good morning to you. How are you? Yes, very good. It's got to be good to be home. Oh, yeah. I only got out a couple of hours ago, and yeah, I'll tell you what, it's good to get some tucker in. <laughs> I was going to say, first the first meal you've eaten. Uh, well, I mean, I grabbed what I could scavenge on the way to the meal, which is like basic lollies and chips and stuff, but once I got to the setup there, there was a massive shepherd's pie, and oh, <laughs> yum. There we go. So we're talking proper shepherd's pie with lamb mince there, a honey badger, or are we talking oh, beef mince, a bit of cottage pie? We're talking chunky steak in there, beef, and uh, yeah, and, and just a just the right ratio. Over here, there's a couple of good cooks, I tell you. Yeah, right. So you've basically come home pretty ripped. Yeah, well, yeah, because you're oh, an yeah, awful, buddy. you're an awful Nick going oh, in. I yeah, know yeah. you were horrible, yeah. <laughs> yeah. absolute sack. Of <laughs> you were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the chassis was uh, found wanting there early, but after a couple of little sessions and, uh, and a diet of beans and rice, it sort of sharpens up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And so what I didn't realise is um, you've got a little baby Billy and you had to leave him at home and go and do this adventure. How was that? Was that hard? It was actually really, really hard uh, because he he was just about to start crawling. He hadn't He hadn't crawled yet, but... After coming out of the, the jungle, I've had a look at my phone and I've seen some of the videos that have been sent through of him crawling. So, Aww. yeah, I, I did miss that milestone, uh, but, you know, I I can't wait. I can't wait to get back and see him. But you've done so many things now, and apart from being a professional athlete, where 
you've really been tested mentally. So comparing this to something like SAS, I know we don't want to talk about different shows, but what sort of mental challenge was this? Yeah, this one was a lot more in your own head because the Tucker, it was actually probably better than SAS, but it seems like a much longer period where, you, where you're not doing much. So the, the, the battle on this on this one, on, on Celebrity, was in your own mind and and conversations about Kardashians. That was pretty hard to do. <laughs> you seem to bond a little bit with Liz Ellis, who is just one of my favourite athletes of all time. Um, who do you feel like you made connections with in the jungle? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Liz, Liz is, a, is a champion. Um, Harry Garside, I didn't think, but he's a wise young soul. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. There's, there's, a, there's a lot going on with Harry Garside. I, obviously, and I'm going to sound so stereotypical, but when you think of fighters and boxers, you think it's always just eyes on the prize, I'm here to fight. But he's a really intriguing, complex young man. It's really nice. Yeah, well, I think it's an interesting one because often people who have come through a rough trot, either through childhood or in their early stages of life, it's, even later stage, it doesn't matter. When, when you've been through a bit of suffering, it seems that you have a different perspective on life and your connection to the, the world and those around you is just, it, for him, it's just incredible. How he speaks to a group, even, you know, just you'd think it was a 30, 40 year old bloke. Mate, give us your thoughts on Adam Cooney because I've had the pleasure of working with Adam for several different things. I just love that Adam Cooney proposed to his wife with a cheesel. I love that. <laughs> yeah, just a little burgering. Um, so yeah. the footy world, the AFL world in particular, knows how much of a character he is. Do you feel like Australia gets a better insight into just how much of a gem this bloke is? And that is, of course, if you do like him because you might say, actually, I didn't connect with him at all. <laughs> No, no, he, he's a bloody legend. He's so he's very funny. But that dry humour. Yeah. He, was, he was saying a few things in camp, which I I'll be the only one laughing sometimes. You know, and everyone else is bloody. And I knew what he was talking about. But yeah, we, honestly, they're all in there now. They're all bloody. It actually surprised me. It's, it's really good. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Just so you know, throughout this entire interview and conversation, I've been picturing you in the woods in your underwear. Uh, in your tradies, so <laughs> that's been a thing. Anyway. Hey, hey Badge, don't worry. I'm a, I'm a rugby fan. I'm still picturing you uh, scoring tries on the wing for the Wallabies. <laughs> yeah, oh. mate, that's the goat. Bloody hell. <laughs> Over the days. Yeah. Hey, thanks for your time, mate. Good luck with it all. Good on you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. The biggest breaking story this town has ever seen is huge. Just you just can't you believe it. This is so juicy. Jody's Juice. Just a bit of breaking news, Alec Baldwin, uh, all the charges have been dropped against him. Obviously, someone was shot on uh, the set of his movie Rust, but um, he will not go to trial now, so that's good news for him. That's huge news, and that's mm. been ongoing for quite a while. Yeah. Hey, do you follow Mel Buttle on Instagram? Uh, no, I do not, but please uh, educate me. So she basically does a parody of a mum, and it's very, very funny. Um, anyway, she's explained on the project why she, who she's based her character on. Have a listen. This is mum going off about the b- at her work. Oh, language, he said it, okay. So she just came in in the foulest mood this morning. Brings the whole place down with their energy. Are they all based on your own mum? A lot of them are based, but for legal reasons I say, oh, it's a mashup of different mums I know. It's my mum. Oh. It is my, don't tell anyone though, that's private. My mum would just come home from work, throw her handbag on the bench and be like, she's done it again. She's touched my files. And I'm like, all right, we're in for a 45 minute story here, Mum. Bitchy attitude, one word answers. Um, okay. You just keep saying that she's annoying. She's I, annoying, I think I she's think annoying. I think she's absolutely endearing and lovable and charming and represents a huge portion of Australia that you've just alienated. No. Good luck in the comments, Sam. No, we can't be on the so Daily Sam Mail again. Sam Taunton says women in their 50s are annoying. Okay, wow. Abort, abort. <laughs> She's very, very good. Chuck her a follow, can you? Okay. Will you do that for me today? Yes, yeah, certainly will. Looking forward to it. All right. <laughs> um, Sarah Ferguson has revealed why she's not invited to King Charles' coronation. So last week it was revealed that she didn't get an invitation to the crowning of Charles and Camilla at Westminster Abbey on May the 6th. She's not among the 2,000 guests, despite knowing Charles since they were little kids together. Mm. Um, she said she's going to watch it on TV at the Royal Lodge, which she shares with disgraced ex-Prince Andrew. Right, there you go. It's all mm, happening. Mm, isn't it? I mean, that's a tough gig not to get invited to, particularly when you're supposed to be there because of blood. She said, I'm not invited because it's a state occasion. Being divorced, you can't have it both ways. I'm enjoying being divorced to my husband, not from my husband. That doesn't make sense to me. What do you mean? Like, Ten times. She said, I'm, I'm enjoying being divorced to my husband, but not from my husband. What does that mean? It's a bit of a play on words, isn't it? Yeah. Can you I'm explain it to confused. me, though? I was confused from the Mel Buttle. 
<laughs> I've been confused for a minute and a half. <laughs> you keep pushing me and my head's about to explode. Uh, no? um, now, this is some more breaking news. You know how I said last week that Sean Mendes and Camilla Cabello were caught passion on at yes. Coachella? Just like <laughs> <laughs> They've been filmed holding hands now in LA. Oh, so gross. Might, she might, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> might. Oh, yeah. Because they're so unattractive, those two. So it might be back on. There you go. Oh, there you go. Well, that's nice. Mm. Okay. So what? They're on, off, on, off, and now they're back on. Yeah, apparently. Okay. Good um, stuff. Oh, I hate this update. That's really nice, isn't it? Battle of the Bangers. We launched this this morning. Yeah. So I've got a song. It is Heaven by DJ Sammy. And you've got a song, 50 Cent Into Club. Mm. Put it to Instagram, Nova 919. Put a little poll up there. Yep. Uh, right now, yeah. my little banger is sitting at 67%. Yeah. And if my maths serves me correctly... The remaining percentage is 33. That belongs to you. Yeah. I will make this plea again to all the mums in the cars this morning, driving to work. If you feel at the root of your core that you are a rapper, then you need to get involved in this Instagram yeah. poll. I need to play 50 Cent in the club. And you've only got a few minutes left. Is that it? Yes. Well, that's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. Hurry up. Let's go, DJ Sammy. Launch this this morning. Battle yeah. of the Bangers, what it is. You got two songs. So I'll choose a song, you choose a song, put it out to the good folks at Nova919 on Instagram. A bit of a poll. Yep. So, you know what? What do you reckon about these two absolute bangers? Of course, yeah. you've got the top dog. It's 2003. Very effeminate of you, that choice. What do you mean? Very effeminate. Oh, well, it's just who I am, okay? Mm. You're Run, a, Steve. You're a man who shaves your legs. Yes. Where we're at. And if you think that's a strange song selection, imagine Jody Oddy twerking to this. So this poll's been running for a good part of about an hour. Yep. Round about an hour. Mm-hmm. It has. Um, DJ Sammy got out to a real early lead yeah. in the poll. Um, nice and early. Concerned, and I appeal to the good mothers of Adelaide, South Australia. If you deep down, I you think you're a rapper, then you need to vote. Yeah, and I just wonder. It feels like maybe DJ Sammy thought that it was a I don't know a 400 meter race, but it's actually a 2 k oh. So, Sean, you've got some results for us, don't you? It pains me, yeah. So oh, my heart's uh, pounding, by no. the way. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god! Fifteen minutes ago, we were 67 percent in favour of DJ Sammy, yep. and 33 percent in favour of. In the club, right? So yep. in the club. In the club, thank Sorry. you. The results. Yes. For the first ever Battle of the Bangers yes. with Jody and Hazy. Yes. On sixty yes. percent of the votes. Yes. In the club. Yes. Oh, come on. Hey. This is Reese. Yeah, this is oh. It was your little last second oh play. God. Just hit play. <laughs> So this is the deal. Live golf really hard to get a hold of the golfers. We set down our absolute top dogs. Now this mm. producer Zoe and Jody Oddie and yep. what sort of return did we get there, Jody? We Jodes? all got denied. Yeah. Poor producer Zoe. No, no. Just wanted to ask a, a young golfer if he was single or anyone was single. Who who has ever said no to producer Zoe? No one ever. It's a first. She's the sweetest person on the planet. It's a genuine first. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so we thought, you know what, we'll just uh, channel our inner TMZ and Daily Mail type mm. real sort of parasite um, antics. <laughs> <laughs> we thought, go out there, get a selfie with the golfer, send it to us and we'll pay you. Yep. We'll pay you $100. Yeah. Let's make some cash for the weekend. Mm. Good morning to you, James. Morning. How you doing? Good. Oh, geez, mate, you've been busy. Can take us through how many golfers and who that you snapped a few little selfies with. So I was there all day yesterday. Uh, I got pictures with Brooks Kepka, Bubba Watson, Mito Pereira, Carlos Ortiz. Like, maybe six or seven players yesterday. Oh my He's been God. busy. He's been busy. Hey, what was Bubba Watson like? Because if you read some of the threads on social media, apparently he can be a bit of a tricky character. Really? Yeah, he's uh, all right. He, he was an absolute character, yep. being followed around by golf gods. Um, 
Hey, it seemed like a pretty good vibe there. So. There you go. Good Very stuff. nice. Okay. James, you went we're, and paid. Yeah, we're not giving you 100 bucks for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll try and sort something out. We'll try and sort something out. But as we usually do, when it's a tricky situation for us, we're just going to handball it over to producer, to producer Zoe. Zoe. And she can deal with this situation. <laughs> good on you. Very good stuff. That's um, how you get paid. So I was told down there at Grange that um, we could hit them up for interviews prior to the tournament, but during the tournament... Yes, they're in game. No they're in game mode. Yeah, you're not allowed anywhere near them. There you go. Thanks mm. so much for your involvement um, and sending that through to the Jody and Hazy page. Are you telling me you built a time machine? Hazy's on this Daisy. It's Friday tickets, please. <laughs> <laughs> On this day, he returns for the 21st of April. Um, let's take a little trip down memory lane, shall we? 1926, the late Queen Elizabeth II was born. Aww. Oh. Okay. Well, that's brought down the mood, hasn't it? Because oh. we all know what happened, how that story ends. Yeah, well, how did it end? Wait, she died. Oh, she did, of course. Oh. It says the late Queen Elizabeth II. Oh. Well, I mean, late because she was late to a function. <laughs> No, because she's died. Sorry, that's on me. I'll wear that. Okay. Not quite how we drew it up. Uh, 1975, ABBA uh, was released in Sweden. So I assume that Bruce Abernethy got himself in trouble in Sweden, did something uh, very untoward, and, and got himself released at the short... Oh, hang on, I read that wrong. <laughs> ABBA, the album, was oh. released in Sweden. Oh, my God, that was so confusing. But you'd imagine the great Bruce Abernethy doing a bit of damage in Sweden. Oh, you? you can imagine. Can you imagine... Imagine the great Bruce having out the, ooh, chicks, pizza, brandy. Um, just being in Sweden looking around going, oh, blonde, blonde, blonde. Blonde, blonde, chick, blonde. Chick. <laughs> chicks, brandy. 1989, Game Boy was released by Nintendo in Japan. Everyone had a Game Boy, didn't they, at some stage? Yeah, no. Didn't you? Um, never been into gaming, don't understand. Don't it. lure me into the Tasmanian thing where I say, oh, you didn't have Game Boy down in Tasmania oh. when you were growing up. I was like, oh. I'm not going to do it because I'm above it. Yeah. But did you have a Game Boy? No, down I didn't. <laughs> we had Commodore 64s. Sorry? They're a computer. A Commodore 64? Yeah, it's a game computer. You can play Tetris and no, all sorts of things. It's an uh, automobile produced by Holden. What? A Commodore 64. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's called. Okay, good stuff. What did you play on there? Like Tetris and yes. paddleboard and yes. things like that. Yes, exactly what we played. Boop, 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 boop. boop. <laughs> 2012, Neil Diamond. Anyway, yes. you're younger than me. You've made your points, okay? <laughs> Move on. Neil Diamond, who's 71, married his manager, Katie McNeil, 42 in 2012. Conflict of interest. It was his third marriage and her first, which mm. brings us to this point of On This Daisy. Da -da 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 -da. You're caught up in the moment there just a little bit. Sorry about that. That's what Neil Diamond does to you. <laughs> All right. Let's let's uh, let's just uh, swing back in the direction of Carly Rae Jepsen. Let's Number just one song. hope and pray at this point there's been a bleep. <laughs> <laughs> Better call me maybe. Hey, I just met you. And this is crazy. Good morning, Fitzy. There he is. Is he even there? <laughs> is he there? Not quite. Okay. Connection issues have failed us this morning, so we thought we'd try the good old-fashioned route of the phone. <laughs> good morning to you, Ryan Fitzgerald. Currently talking to you guys through a can and a piece of string. <laughs> have you got me? Oh, hang on a sec. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? <laughs> Do you know what? I've been doing this. I've been a part of Nova for 20 years, right? Yeah. And can I just tell you, the thing called ISDN oh. is an absolute myth. It never works. No. no. In fact, I recall uh, there's an event, this is very radio in, but there's an event called the Acras, and, and, and you and with <laughs> did a parody um, about the ISDN to the tune of YMCA, Why Doesn't It yeah. Effing Work? Yeah, and Hugh Jackman got on board with yes. that and helped us out. That yes. was very, very good. But, yeah, no, it's good to talk to you guys. I mean, how good? We're coming off. I'm still celebrating after Gather Round. How good was it? Oh, it's amazing. In particular, Fitzy, can we just talk about your crows for a second? So I, I told this early in the week. We are talking to Tom Wren. I went to the game, and at one stage I found myself just staring at Jordan Dawson. I was watching him kick the balls. There was a, a kick in the first quarter where he had to – it was centimetre perfect to uh, Darcy Fogarty, but – 
at one stage, I, I found myself convulsing and shaking and my eyes rolled in the back of my head and people around me thought that I was having a stroke and I had to reassure them there was something else happening, but I couldn't tell them what, just, exactly what was happening, it's but it was just pleasurable. Jordan. Jordan. It's just Jordan. It's just Jordan. I, I actually saw him after the game, Hazy, and I just... It was a moment there. Unfortunately, his wife was there. Oh. And I was about to kiss him. Yeah. I was about to go in for the passion. I thought, I better not. She's right there. But, yeah, what, what a, uh, they're just playing good footy at the moment. Let's cherish it while we can because yes. we know history the last few years. They, they have dropped off at a certain stage. But I think the confidence is up and these young kids are playing good footy. When yep. you talk about fangirl moments, I had one with Darcy Fogarty the other day. Down yeah, at the right. and I, We cross paths and he, he's got these really piercing blue eyes. I was about to say, I don't want to sound suspicious here, but he's got beautiful he's eyes. Got beautiful eyes. Oh, wow. And I was like, he yeah. walked past me and I was like, hi, Darcy. Oh, like a 14-year-old and he, girl. <laughs> and he's, I mean, he's so young, but yeah. he's like, he's a brute of a man. Like, yeah. it's like he's, he's a Lucendale boy. He's like a farm boy, but God, he's just, you know, I would love, <laughs> To yeah. run my fingers down Darcy <laughs> Fogarty's back, I tell you. <laughs> Nuzzle into that neck. <laughs> that <huge> neck. Yes. <laughs> I feel you. Oh, I feel like this gosh. has gotten real weird this morning. Yeah, that's fine. Oh. We're just speaking our minds. Um, Fitzy, Crows taking on the Hawks in Tassie. Is that tricky or should it be pretty stock standard for the Crows given how they go? No, uh, it is tricky um, because, you know, we, we don't start favourite in too many games. So, um the boys, I think they understand. Look, you know, Nixie would be drilling into them that we've been in this position before where we have been favourites for the game. And um, unfortunately, we've dropped the ball a little bit. So, um, I, look, I'm confident going into the game. Hawthorne, unfortunately, are not going to have their best year, but um, you never know. And it's down in Tasmania, so it'll be cold and wet. So let's hope the boys can get over the line. Mm, very nice. Port taking on the Eagles at Adelaide Oval. Port, it would seem, are back. And saying that, no Charlie Dixon. Yeah, look, that, that's an easy one. West, oh, you got to feel for West Coast Eagles. I mean, I think they've called up. There's a debut game. I think a kid who's been playing under 14, so he's playing for West Coast <laughs> Eagles this week. From, hey, from, is that your son, Lenny? Is he playing for <laughs> Good luck to Lenny. Margaret River. The poor kid's a surfer. He's not even a footballer. He's playing for the Eagles this week. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, str- they're struggling. So that should be an easy win for Port Adelaide as well. But... You know, I'm just, I love the other round so much. I mean, God, I've been bagging South Australia for years, but that place is really lovely. I love it down there. <laughs> oh, come on. I love yeah. it. Oh, my God. I did see you lurking around the rooms with Guy Sebastian. Yeah. Guy was, how's this, Joe? A while ago, I tried to get a few of the ambassadors together because one thing that the Sydney Swans do really well is that they get all their ambassadors together, they give them a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, must, they, they, I must admit they they buy them up with free booze and, and food and stuff. But it's always a great shot when they go to the box and they've got all the ambassadors there. So I got in contact with Sammy Mack. Sammy Mack was keen on coming down, but then he ended up had, having to work somewhere else. Adam Liao, I was trying to get as well. And Guy, I messaged Guy. I didn't hear anything back from Guy, so I thought oh, he must be recording a new album or something somewhere. Yeah. Guy's down in the rooms. He <laughs> screamed at my call. Oh, oh. oh no. Is he getting close to... Uh, that's awkward. He's getting close to Darcy Foldy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> God, <laughs> his know, hands down his back. Well, I, yeah, I know. So, no, it was good to see Guy down there and, and see the boys up and going, but it was such a good round. I just... And, and, yeah, it and, was just brilliant. And Guy was writing a love song for Darcy Fogarty, which is lovely. <laughs> well, Can't uh, wait to hear yeah, that. Ned, Ned McHenry was there. Uh, Wayne Miller was talking to his sons as well. Actually, can I tell you this? Guy Sebastian, he played in the slowdown tape. Yeah. And, mate, he is actually, sporting-wise, yeah. very good and never shied away from a 50-50 ball. He went yeah. in really hard. He was a great cricketer. And yes. a great footballer. Mm. And one of my sons plays against his sons here in Sydney. And he, his son's a good footballer as well. So the Sebastians aren't too bad on the boot. There you go. Um, hey, Fitz, before we let you go, we just played before Ollie Lord uh, calling his mum to tell her the news he was playing his first game. When you debuted for the Swans, do you remember calling the folks or what their reaction was? Yeah, I do. I remember mum and dad were crying. Um, oh. They were really, really over the moon. Um and I think that was because they were getting a free trip to Sydney and uh, <laughs> they were going to play. 
<laughs> like, we're right. going from no longer to Sydney, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is my, hey, can I tell you, this is one story, though. My first Rezies game, um, my first Rezies game um, for the Swans, Dad drove from Adelaide to Sydney to see the game. And at quarter time, Hazy, Dad thought it was like a suburban game and he jumped the fence of the SEG to come and listen to the quarter time address. <laughs> <of three. laughs> you get tackled? Security, security guard comes up and goes, mate, what are you doing? You can't do this. And he goes, F off. That's my son right there, number 18. I'm going to listen to the quarter time address. <laughs> and they let him out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, Mick gets special privileges. Oh, That's fine. Oh, it was it was brilliant. So yeah, it is a special time. Good luck to Ollie this week. What a what a great effort. Beautiful. Hey Fitzy, appreciate your time this morning, mate. Thanks for the tips, and uh, hopefully we can catch up again really soon. No worries. Thanks, Hazy. Thanks, Jones. Have a good week. See ya. Very good stuff. All right, there you go. Okay, we're done. Yeah, we are absolutely done. So good to speak to Fitzy before as well. We gave us his tips. Yeah. So uh, just on that as well, if you want to see some expert tips. <laughs> It's not that funny because my tips are on there and they're awful. But anywho, um, see some experts at tips.com.au um, for the tips via the advertiser. You do it in the Tizer, do you? Yeah, I think there's about uh, 20 of us. I think I'm in the top 20. Yep. <laughs> <So> yeah. <laughs> I'm about 18. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they are literally silly enough to think that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. Good job. For example. God, uh, I can set them straight. Yeah, Frio and Western Bulldogs are playing tonight. I tipped Hawthorne. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? Uh, looking forward to speaking to Ricky Lee Coulter as well. We're going to do that next week, early yes, next week. Yeah. Mm. And I'm going to get you out of your comfort zone because Good. you have a really big fear in your life and that's dancing in public and we need to fix it. Because you need to be confident enough to strut some stuff. Oh, my gosh. And no you, no one wants to see this body dance. It's like a newborn giraffe <laughs> trying to find his feet. <laughs> Make some moves in front of thousands of people. That's okay. what I'm going to get you to. Can I have thousands of beers before I do it? Yes, you can. Okay, great. That's fine. That's fine. All right. All right, enjoy your weekend. We'll catch you bright and early on Monday morning. I'm off to the golf. Oh, good for you. Words I never thought I'd hear you in myself say. Ever. Oh, yeah, you'll be absolutely engaged in the golf, won't you? I'll be so focused on the golf and the greens <laughs> and the putting and the, you know, the way the rough lies and all that. All the stuff. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Yeah. This is Jody and Hazy on Nova.